Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day nine puzzle using Ivy. We're back to number grids, thank goodness. And this puzzle asks us first to find the grid positions that are lower than all the ones around it. And what I'd like to do is something like X is less than one rotate X, but that rotate will wrap values around the edge of the board. And we don't want that. So let's add some Sentinel 10 values around the board because 10 will be bigger than any value. So we can start by adding the Sentinels to the top and bottom, a 10 sandwich. And then we can sandwich this transpose of the sandwich to add the sides. There we go. Now X is less than one rotate X does the right thing because only tens are being rotated around from one side of the board to the other. So now we can find the lower values just looking at horizontals because X is less than one rotate X and X is less than minus one rotate X. And then we need to and them together with the lower values vertically. And again, we can use the transpose trick. There we go. Oops. There we are. Those are the right spots. And so now we need to compute the total risk levels of the low points. And the risk is defined as one plus the grid value. So the risk is going to be the sum of the low values times the actual value. The risk the sample is 15. That's the right answer. So now let's look at the risk in the input. 558. All right, on to part two. Now in part two, we're supposed to do a flood fill backwards from these basins to count how many values are in each one. To do that, first we need different identifiers for each one, so we need to number them. Now to number them, we can start with the low values, and then we can run, use a running total. And that running total is going to increment every time it gets to one of those, and then we can reshape it back into a grid. Um, and then we want to extract just the ones that correspond to the original basin values. All right, and now we've numbered the basins one, two, three, and four. Let's save that. Great. All right, so we'll call that the basin to start with. Now we need to use the original board to flood fill from the low points. Now, anytime that we have a filled point next to a higher point less than nine, we're gonna have to flow up to fill that higher point too. So once again, we'll start with the horizontals. We have the original elevations, we have the basins, and we can look at where is the elevation bigger than the one that's next to it right there. And then we can say, where is the elevation also less than nine? There are fewer of those. And then we can multiply that by minus one rotated with the basin to actually get, well, three and four should move over. And so we can repeat that for each direction. We can say dripping one is what we just did. Okay, and then dripping two is going to be the same with ones. And then dripping three, we have to go vertical this time. Say so e is bigger than one drop e comma ten, and e is less than nine times one drop b comma zero. And then to do the other way, we're just going to do minus ones, minus one, minus one, put the ten on the top this time. Okay, so now we should be able to see e drip b equals e drip 1b, e drip 2b, e drip 3b, e drip 4b, no drip basin. All right, so we have dripped one step in this flood fill, and now we want to just run the flood the entire time, just keep doing it until we get something different. So each step, We'll start with the basin and we'll add a drip. And then if the entire thing is the same, we'll stop with that basin. Otherwise, we'll flood from there. And then to flood an entire board, we just flood starting with the basins. So we say flood frame of sample. And let's see. I think that does match what we're supposed to have. All right. So um, let's 
Now we're supposed to count the number, the three largest basins, which are 9, 14, and 9, and then multiply those together. So we can do that by adding the columns of the outer product of the basin numbers and the flattened map. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and we do an outer product with the flattened map, now we count the columns. There's a 3, a 9, a 14, and a 9. So let's save that. And we do max that. So count flood frame sample. That works. And now we can sort them easily enough. We've seen this before. All right. And then we just take the top three. All right. So putting that all together, the score is take multiply the top three of the largest counts flooding the frame. And that's 1134. So now let's score the input. It might take a second or two. Three, there we go. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.